is. Thank you, Chairwoman Deget. I wanted to start with Dr. Verma. You state in your testimony that you are, and I quote, terrified for my patients in my community. Can you explain what has you so terrified for your patients? Are there particular impacts you fear most as abortion bans spread in states across the country? Thank you for that question. Um, so we are already seeing these impacts across the country in states where bans have gone into effect and in states like Georgia where I practice where we already have abortion restrictions. So these restrictions are making it harder for people to get care, including in medical emergencies. And so as one example um, of where these laws just don't make sense for us when we're taking care of the patient in front of us, I've taken care of patients with a condition called pulmonary hypertension. So that's a condition where if the person continues the pregnancy, their risk of death is 50%, 50%. But under these laws, if that person comes to me at six or seven weeks before they've gotten a chance to get really sick, can I do their abortion or do I have to wait until they get sick, they risk death? The idea of having to wait for someone to get sick is just counterintuitive to what we train to do as physicians, but that's what we're seeing in our communities. That's what we're being told by these laws that we have to do. Thank you. Dr. Resnick, does the AMA share these concerns? Are there other impacts in uh, your members fear should political interference in healthcare continue and abortion bans expand? We do share these concerns. Um, as has been described today, we are seeing chaos in the states. So we have not only trigger laws from recent years and new laws being passed, but we have laws from the 1800s still on the books in some states when medical care was quite different than it is today. So physicians are, are struggling every day. These are not rare examples with how to treat, again, these, these patients who present with great complexity in terms of how to treat them. And so in order to give informed consent and be able to proceed with what's best for a patient and help them decide, um, the, the lack of flexibility due to that government intrusion is, is very frightening. Thank you. Now, we've heard from the medical professionals, so let me ask Professor Littman for your legal expertise. Can you talk a bit about what it means to have a constitutional right taken away, not only for access to abortion, but for other fundamental rights that Americans build their lives around? And when the court no longer follows precedent, what does that do to the rule of law? We are already seeing that the court's decision overruling Roe versus Wade has opened the door for possibly overruling other rights as well. In Dobbs itself, Justice Thomas called on the court to revisit the right to contraception, the right to marriage equality, and the right to same-sex sexual intimacy. After Justice Thomas penned that opinion, essentially inviting litigants to bring him cases to overrule those decisions, we have seen politicians, including some of your colleagues in the other chamber, urge states to pass laws that would allow the court to overrule decisions recognizing marriage equality, decisions recognizing the right to contraception, and decisions recognizing the right to same-sex sexual intimacy. We are already seeing some of these broadly worded laws are restricting those rights today. There have been confusion and chaos about whether individuals still have continued access to certain forms of contraception, like IUD, Plan B, the morning after pill, because some of these broadly worded laws might potentially prohibit those practices. And so providers and patients are experiencing uncertainty and doubt about whether they can continue to obtain uh, contraception and whether they can continue to provide it. So even if the court doesn't overrule those decisions immediately, its decision overruling Roe has already chilled the exercise of constitutional rights in addition to the right to abortion. Thank you. And let me just ask Dr. Guerrero, can you describe what the Dobbs decision has meant for your clients and what added uncertainty folks are now facing when they call to ask for your help? Sure. I think that the repercussions have been catastrophic. Um, as far as the feelings that are coming up for people, there's just a huge range of extreme fear, um, urgency, anxiety, uh, depression at the thought of not being able to access care. Um, and we're seeing a sense of people just really feeling uh, already they were facing restrictions that really prevented them from accessing care in the first place. And now with the decision, uh, we're seeing that kind of ratcheted up to a level where there's something to be really fearful about this being a crisis. 
and that's not hyperbole. That's not just some sort of flying off the off the handle dramatics. It's a real potential for humanitarian crisis, and so we're facing something that is going to be um, incredibly difficult to manage. I appreciate that, and I, I want to thank our witnesses for the work that you do every day to support the rights and health of women and families across the country. And I yield back, Madam Chair. Thank the Chairman. Chair now recognizes the ranking member, Ms. McMorris-Rogers, 